All right, what's up, my peeps? Joshua Smith here with another GSD Mode podcast interview where every single week I interview top entrepreneurs, top real estate professionals, and straight up top badasses out there dominating their space. And today, you guys, got we got another rock star badass here on the podcast, a repeat guest, my good friend, Greg McDaniel. Welcome back, brother. What up, Joshua, dude? I'm pumped, brother. Our pre-show was rocking. We got some incredible content for everybody that really got to dig their teeth in today. So I'm blessed to be back, man. So, so thankful for the invite. Yeah, no, I appreciate you coming back on, man. It's been a long time, dude. And, and it has been. You're 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 somebody that's always doing epic, amazing shit. You've been in this game a long time. What, twenty four plus years now? Yeah, twenty four. Yeah, tw twenty four years, give or take a couple of months here and there. You know, as you guys all know, started with my father back in the day, bootstrapped it all the way up, totally fubaring everything I touched in the very first year. But then learning from my mistakes very quickly after you lose twenty five thousand dollars when you screw up. It's one of those things when you touch that stove, you never touch it again. So yeah, we've been, I've been always looking for that new thing, that new different, that one tweak that could give you that massive visibility in a new manner. That's going to be something that your competitors haven't even thought of yet. And we're going to talk about one of those later on the show. Yep. Yep. Love it, dude. So is your, is your dad still in the game? Give or take really depends on who you ask. He's 99.9% .9 of the time at this point, he moved up with my mom to uh, grass Valley. They have a 10 acre ranch. They're building a golf course on it. Um, they have, I think they're getting cows or sheep or something. They got chickens. They're living the country life. They're loving it, but he's still doing a couple of deals down here, but he's more kind of an advisor uh, level at this point. And he's fine with that. But yeah, he's done 50 plus almost 60 years in the business. So I think he's, he's, uh, he's got the coffee mug and the uh, t-shirt and he's ready to go play in the, uh, play in the hills with his animals. Yeah. That's amazing though, dude. 60 years. I mean, just to fathom the changes that that dude has seen, you know, from, from, I mean, back to the old school days of carrying around the key where you're, you're the, you know, the gatekeeper of all the knowledge, all the info to just all the shit he's seen. It's probably, probably, it a, I'm sure turned into some pretty interesting conversations. Uh, you could not even imagine. I mean, he tells me stories about when he first started out and this is something that's going to, every new agent who's hearing my voice right now is going to go, what the shit is he talking about? The MLS boys and girls not was not on a computer it was not on a hard drive it was a printout that was delivered to these offices once a week by taxi so if you didn't have because they came in sheets too it wasn't like a book it was a sheet of the new listings and the new pendings and the new solds so you'd get the new sheet and you weren't considered to be in the business if you hadn't been in it and it had about six months of the sheets in your book then you were in the business now this stuff is being sent out electronically on our smartphones or Google glasses or whatever they're going to be coming out next with, you know, your watches, everything's coming through electronically. Back then it was a taxi. So the conversations were completely a paradigm shift in regards to what his reality is and what our reality is and the ability we have in front of us when someone says, well, I don't have enough tools to make my business profitable or I can't stand out. You're full of fucking shit, dude. There is so much of a blessing in front of you that it is a astonishing when you open your eyes and you look around for half a second you can find something that you can stand out with but i mean it's really fun to kind of shift the way you look and see things i know jonathan that's something joshua that's something that you do on a consistent basis you're always seeing something through a different filter and that's why i love coming on the show because i learned from you if you didn't see in the pre-show i was already writing notes about what you were talking about yep yeah no i mean there's always massive opportunity dude and you and i were talking about before we hit the record button which we'll get into here in a little bit but I mean, there, there's more free, amazing tools to just yeah. go out there and murder it than, than I've ever seen. You know, I just did yeah. a podcast recently of why, why it's the best time in my 18 plus years of doing this now that I've seen to be in this industry where yeah. everybody else is bitching, moaning and whining. Cause I know that there's been some adjustments that we've had to make and there's some, you know, different, different competitive landscape today with lesser inventory and transaction volume decline being down. But, you know, for those committed to it, it's like, it's so fucking easy to dominate and with little to no money. Yeah, little to no money. That's such a fascinating thing you just switched into and a great segue on that because a lot of folks, they have this misunderstanding that if you're going to get good video or good audio for these Instagram posts or these social media posts or YouTube videos or whatever else, you have to spend an arm and a leg when in reality, I can go over if you want me to a couple of very inexpensive, very effective tools that would make you stand out heads and shoulders above everybody will cost you less than maybe three or 400 bucks all in and you'll be able to stand out and then you can then your buying just goes and the content is everywhere around you to, for you to become a an aficionado yeah let's do it man all right um one of the things that i actually truly like i have a most most of you guys have some sort of a tripod somewhere this is the dji gimbal gimbal three they have a gimbal four now but this thing is so easy to, to do you put your phone in you pop it up 
what it does, it, it will create a cinematography effect when you're shooting. It will take away the bumps, the jiggles, and everything else when you're shooting. It will give you guidelines on how to create shorts and reels. They'll just ask you to how to shoot with this thing. You can take it, and uh, for everyone listening, on the bottom, there's a little area where you can screw it onto a tripod. Now, when you download the app for the DJI gimbal, this thing right here, um, it will... Once you load it, load your phone in, you'll be able to do a facial recognition software in there. So when you have it pinned up, um, you can then get yourself tracked. And all of a sudden, you can move around and the gimbal will follow your face because you'll track your face and you'll move around. Now, that's great, right? But what if they can't hear you because you're in an echoey room? That's one of the biggest problems that we've seen. So this is something that I was made aware of, and this, so the gimbal is probably about, oh, under 200 bucks, something like that. This are, these are the Polyland um, wireless microphones. So these are, they come in this tiny little case. And the thing that's so incredibly interesting about this is that this is like an iPod case. So you unlock it and it charges itself when it closes, right? For the first time ever, this is a dual lavalier microphone system. So what that means is like these little guys on the sides, these are each microphones. And then the guy in the middle is a receiver. So as you can see, this microphone, I'm gonna hold it up to my finger, is extremely small, barely comes up to my first knuckle, right? Now, the cool thing is with these lavalier mics, you can clip them onto your shirts and you can stand up to, I think 675 feet away from the camera and these things will still pick up clear as a bell audio so your entire shooting apparatus is going to look like this this is your receiver you plug in this one little cord right into the receiver you plug the other side into your phone and your setup is done yeah and it is wireless mic so you can do interviews which i've been doing you can do different kind of uh walking into the camera feed like if you're going to talk about an, a home or a neighborhood these have really been helpful, and the audio with the wind blocking software has been one of the coolest things. I have a couple of interviews with, with shop owners that I cannot wait to do. So you don't, there's no audio laying. We can't. You don't have to lay an audio layer over a video. It's just all done for you, and boom, you can immediately post it. But these are those are two of my favorite things to use, and you know the Hollyland um, wireless mics are just definitely my go-to's on this 100. percent Yeah, no, that's awesome, dude. Yeah, and, and you know what's so dope about it is. You know, I used to have to employ a full-time film team, like videographers, you know, mm -hmm. I, dude, I mean, I've invested probably a hundred grand in film equipment over the years, dude, <laughs> like just stupid <laughs> shit, man. You know, but it, it, dude, it was a big production. Like every time we want to go shoot video, we had to you know, set everything up, the lights, the cameras, the DSLRs, the, you know, audio, all of that. You know, I didn't know how to use any of that shit. So then I had to hire people to do it, shoot it, edit it. Now with your yeah. cell phones, because like you look at the iPhone, and I'm sure the droid's the same, <clears throat> but you look at the iPhone, man, you can do the settings with a, you know, 4K, yep. you know, 60 frames per minute, you know, whatever. So it shoots just as damn good as, as any D DSLR. And then now what you're alluding to there, man, you get a good audio setup. But the, the thing I like about that too, is not just the, the saving in cost, but allows for speed. So you know, because it's like you get, you're in this location, you're like, oh, dude, this would be a dope video. Well, before it was like, now I'd have to go schedule it out, revisit it, bring my people there with me. Now it's like, everything's already in my fucking back pocket or my backpack. It can carry anywhere with you. And you're just good to go in that moment just to go out there and shoot content. Dude, it's funny you say that because I have a, a large tripod and a small, smaller tripod. I have a shooting backpack. It has all my gear in it. It has my tripod sitting right there. So everywhere I go, I bring it with me. So you can literally run and gun and shoot, which I've, what I've found is something that is, is such a time-saving wonderful new technology they just rolled out is that I use a system called StreamYard uh, to shoot my videos. And what they just came, what they just started is that you can shoot and you can attach any social media to it now. So it can be YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, um, TikTok, and pick whatever else you have an account, right? So now you can shoot in the background. So you can record it. So you don't have to go live. Our live counts are going through the floor. I don't know why they're killing them, but they've, they've essentially killed live video with, for any kind of interaction. But they're, they're really boosting, as you and I both know, the shorts and the reels and so on and so forth. So in StreamYard, I'll, I'll, I'll go out to a location, take my Hollyland microphones, my DJI gimbal, my, my stand. I'll get set up and mic'd up. And I will record it to StreamYard. Then it will then, I'll, I can, I can uh, edit it into reels and shorts and then click one button and snap them all out to the social media platforms 
before you even leave the parking lot, depending on your Wi-Fi setup. But that makes posting so fast, so easy, so consistent. Because when you view your life as a book and every part of the book has a chapter. So like right now, you and I are recording this podcast. This is a chapter in both of our lives for today. Then we're going to both go on and do something else in our next chapter. So if you document things then you identify what's going to resonate with folks around you, that, that that's your tribe. So my good friend, Nate, out of uh, Austin, Texas, he's a skydiver and a kayaker, whitewater kayak, kayaker. He posts videos about that. He just got, a, he just got off a cold call, uh, doing some cold calling. And the guy goes, I know you. You do the kayaking and you're the skydiving realtor. I get your emails. The guy's a, a massive investor and he wants them to buy or sell like seven houses for him purely because they talked about whitewater rafting and he was relevant and consistent and persistent in, in staying visible in front of our clientele. And I'll tell you, dude, I'll tell you, Joshua, I, I have screwed up big time on that in my past. I've, I thought, well, you know, everyone knows my name. <laughs> it's it, You're here and then you're gone. So you've got to stay yep. consistent. You see that in your business too, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah. I mean, your, your mother will forget very quickly that you're a realtor. <laughs> yeah, right. So you got to teach and train people how to do business with you, how to send you repeat referral business, and you are forgotten in a minute. Especially, you know, my 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 personal coach Camille Rose Taylor. She always says we're we've shifted into the attention economy, and it's such a busy world, man. It's like all about getting attention now, you know. Um, True. So then transitioning into that, so we got we got equipment set up that anybody mm -hmm. can go out there and do. And 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 what 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 is the cost of those um, Hollyland? So the Hollyland mics, these, I got it for $109. They retail about $149. But if you go to Amazon, uh, I think they're like 116 as of this recording. Uh, okay. But for 150 bucks, the closest competitor is double, if not double and a half the amount this is. And they're larger and clunkier. Yeah, like so really fast run and gun and shooting. Dude, I'm telling you, especially if you, if and when you get one of these, you'll be astonished on how small they are and how sturdy they're felt, they feel. Like I forget I wear one. I mean, yeah. I plan on going door knocking, wearing one of these mics and recording the audio. Now, a lot of people might say that that's good, bad, or ugly, but I'm not, I am not disclosing any locations or any names or anything. This is a pure thing about hearing the audio of how you interact with another person. If you need, if you never post it anywhere, if you just do it for your own knowledge, I have found it. I've gone back and listened to some of my old recordings I did in the, originally, which is off my phone. And I was able to shift my tweak for door knocking, cold calling, and everything else because I heard how my tonality changed. Um, again, always trying to be a student, always trying to grow, always trying to do something a little bit different and understand what the consumer's point of view, not just what I'm looking to get out of them. And that's why I listen to those recordings. Yeah, yeah, 100%. And I've, I've tested like, a, I, I've got the May Besta mic. Similar, okay. similar thing. It just plugs in. It's got a lot the the only issue I've found with it is because I'm such a crazy hand talker and I move so much is that it'll pick up, you know, like it'll like the mic slapping against my chest, you know, but if I, <laughs> yeah. if I hold it right here, it's crystal clear. It only goes like 60 feet of audio, but like, I, I, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to go buy the, the Hollyland ones that you're talking about right now, just for that extra clear audio. But like the ones that I, you know, I've did a video not too long ago on the one that I have, but it was like 20 bucks. You know, um, um start. You know, so, but anyway, with that, it's like, okay, it's inexpensive to get in the game. And it, for most of the equipment, the most expensive element is our phones, which we already have, sure. you know, then from there, you know, cause what I like about you, dude, is, is like, you're still in the trenches yourself at a high level, you know? So, you, yeah. so with this stuff, I mean, yeah, you're out there putting all this content out there and you got your podcasts and, you know, um, um, you know, but you're not like, you know, a lot of others that like, even like myself of, yeah, I mean, I'm still in the trenches in that I'm running my team and I'm very closely aligned with my agents, but I personally haven't went out there and worked with a client in like 10 years, you know? Right. Um, so, you know, so with that being said, where, where I think that most people get caught up, or at least my experience of having conversations with agents of like, what specifically do I create this content around? And you mentioned short form crushing it. So maybe we can just focus on there. Like, what are you seeing really getting attention when it comes to not just attention, but also results when it comes to the type of short form excuse me, uh, uh, video content that you're creating? Really good question. Wow, it's a good question. Um, uh, some of the things that I'm really kind of always tinkering with is I, I'll do test little samples of, of content. So I'll do consistently for a week, one thing, like let's say I do my my cold calling show, Beers and Calls. I'll do, I'll, I'll air that for a, a week straight, kind of see where my viewership starts waning off, okay? That's where I get, I, in my opinion, what I've found, I get market saturation there. 
So then I'll do something completely opposite. I'll then uh, do a series of, or, you know, go to the dog park or look at the scenery or whatever, something different. I am always tweaking in regards to what the content I'm pushing out, what is actually relevant because you are a news source. So people are going to come to you for a couple of things. And I found a lot of people never shift away from these things. So if you're a workout person, you're always posting your workout videos. If you like your car, your house, you're already posting about what your achievements are. If you have kids, the kids eat up the entire feed. People have their lane. They don't deviate. So to really stand out and get a you know consistent change and boost in your, in your content is show people different aspects of your life um, in, in be open and transparent on everything that you do. The, the era in what I have found is that if you're going to be a showboater, and it's fine if you are, that's just, that's your personality. That's totally fine. Showing the houses, the cars, the helicopters, the trips, the jewelry, the clothes, so on forth, so forth. Cool. But try shifting it to something that's completely different and watch the interaction or reaction change. You could have already had the perfect lane for yourself, but what if you could make it a little bit better and, and then integrate different pit, tidbits of content so that they don't know what's coming next? I mean, Howard Stern's a perfect example of this. He's a DJ. We're real estate agents or mortgage professionals. Some way, shape, or form, you're, that's why you're listening to this. Well, Howard Stern was so popular because nobody knew what he was going to say. So the people who hated him stayed on longer than the people that loved him when they did you know, surveys. Why is that important for real estate? Well, stop saying the same thing. It gets really stinking boring when you're always like, this is my new bed, three, three bed, two bath house on a quarter acre, quiet street, cul-de-sac, walking distance. I don't give a shit. You're not talking to me. You're talking to a consumer, but you're doing it in a way that puts them to sleep. Like you give them anesthesia and they're just going to fall asleep, wake up, not have felt a damn thing that you just said. So shake them up, rattle their brains a little bit. Get that. Oh, wait, what is he doing? Where is he at? What's this girl doing? What did she create? That's the mindset. You'll start seeing growth and you're going to have a lot of fun because your creativity is going to start kicking in. You're going to be like, oh my gosh. I didn't know people like to hear about this. Maybe you're a great master knitter or an incredible sewer, or you know, you, you're like the guy who knows everything about pools or sprinkler systems. Fill in the blank. Start talking about your hobbies. Everybody's an expert in something they don't know they're an expert in, but they try to be an expert in something that they're told to be an expert in. Show me what you're great at. Your tribe will follow. And once you give value to them, they in turn, once they know what you do, then they'll come to you. And this is the last part of this very long answer to your very good question is always tell people who you are, where you are, and what you're doing. So, hey, guys, it's Greg McDaniel with EXP Realty. Today, we're going to be covering the best hiking trails here in the East Bay, starting at the base of Mount Diablo. Blah, 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 blah. Talk about them, right? Hey, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this content or anything shorter, go to my YouTube page. I have, a, you know, shorts reels there for the short clips that if you guys want to do the 30-second run or just subscribe and follow me here for the long, long-form videos. Look forward to seeing you. And if you see me, make sure you come and say hello. And that's how we end the videos. And so they know who I am, where I'm from, the content, and I'm out the door and try to keep it within three minutes. Yeah, yeah, we have a strategy and I'm not there to tell anybody that it's the best strategy, but it's just you what we me. follow of, you know, of a four to one. Like meaning, okay, of four, four pieces of content that you create, whether these are posts, real stories, you know, one is real estate, the other three are non-real estate. Okay. You know, because to your like point, that. I mean, when you look at this, it's like, okay, like what's the real estate game? Get people to know you, like you, trust you, be aware of what you do for a living, fall frequently, keep your message in front, frequently your business continues to grow. Well, right. people get to know, like, and some of that trust is going to come from seeing you as the authority in real estate. But a lot of that trust is that connection to you personally. Yes. So, and I think that's what you're really alluding to here of don't just slam people with real estate 24 seven, like allow them to know who you are as a human being, your hobbies, you know, it's like, who is Greg as a person, you know, right. right. And they get, and that's really develops that connection and, and separates you from everybody else. Yeah, it really does. Because like my boy, Nate in, in Austin, right. He's a super cool dude, laid back, chill. But once you understand that he and I became buddies, because I used to do skydiving. He's a, he was an active, he was a licensed skydive instructor for years. So we can kind of that, 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 that friendship without knowing you have a friendship because you have a common interest. So like you said, show people what you like to do and the other folks are going to come out of the woodwork. Who know that Nate liked to ride, you know, you know, class five rapids in a, in a thing of plastic. I mean, that, that sounds terrifying to me, but I mean, it doesn't mean I wouldn't try it because if I shot enough cool videos, I might want to get out there and get my endorphins going. And then your true friendship is made offline because of the online initial. It's, I like the one in four, dude. I really like that. I'm going to, I'm going to steal that. Not, and I'll give you all the credit for it, but I really do like it because it's so, it's easy to think about it. One real estate, three that aren't let people know you, but is that a daily, 
a month, a week? What's your schedule for that? You know, so I can tell you my schedule and then I can, I'll, I'll give you my recommendation schedule. And okay, then, sure. um, but you know, like if somebody's new to social media, you know, when I sit there and tell them, Hey, you need to be posting four pieces of content a day. Mm -hmm. um, well, that can be very overwhelming, you know? So, so then I'm like, okay, well, let's just start with one a day, but it's that same. Okay. Then every, every fourth day is something about real estate. And then the other three, but ideally, I want people posting four pieces of content a day because in this attention economy that we are, because we're not just competing against other realtors, you're competing against fucking every other marketing company out there, every single influencer out there. It's just a busy world. So if we look at this, it's like, okay, and then, well, I'll just utilize Facebook, but this can be emulated on, on pretty much every platform. But, you know, it, it's like, okay, you know, you got, let's just say one post and that post, you know, so you got one post, one reel, two shorts. Now I can be any combination of those. I wouldn't recommend, you know, shorts are good because it keeps, <clears throat> you know, keeps that front of mind awareness of people seeing your name, but because they disappear, right. you know, I wouldn't want to go out there and post, you know, just shorts. But then from there, the cool part about repurposing. So, you know, four pieces a day. So again, and just a mixture of, you know, shorts, reels, and, and a post. Um, but then from there, it's like, okay, I post that on my Facebook personal profile. Then I'll carry that over. If it applies, I'll post on my Facebook business page. Well, mm -hmm. for me personally, everything applies because everything's going to be their motivational, you know, or, or business related or health and fitness right. related, which I just do. I just do, you know. Um, um, I know, you know I see I was, your post. If I was, you know, let's just say good. building my real estate business and, and on my Facebook business page, I wouldn't be posting. If my Facebook business page was to get buyers and sellers, I wouldn't be posting what the hell I'm eating or a workout on there. I'd keep that business. But, you know, I'm kind of turned into where, like, I am my brand now at this, you know, right? So, yeah, um, but then from there, you know, so then it's okay. I take that over. I just duplicate, replicate the same thing on my Facebook page. Now that ends up being eight pieces of content released. Then I do that same thing with Instagram. And then what can apply between Twitter, LinkedIn, TikTok, and YouTube, you know, so then... I mean, it takes me less than 60 minutes a day to get 27 pieces of content out there, Jeez. you know, um, you know, cause I mean, really, again, you're just optimizing four pieces of content for Facebook and then just repurposing that on all the other platforms, you know? Um, but that, I mean, because again, I know it sounds like a lot, but again, it, it is just such a fucking crazy busy world that it just takes more. It's, it's no different than dude today. I got to send more emails. I got to do more reach outs because more shits, you know, even on phones now, shit's showing up as spam. Cause these robo dialers have fucked up the industry for us, you know, totally right? Like, it. um, you know, so it just takes more action and execution. But the cool thing is, is again, do like planning this stuff out if you're methodical with it, it should never take, cause like between creating the content, posting the content and engaging with the content, to be to do everything I just said doesn't take me. It's it's like a maximum sixty minutes a day. Most days it's you know between thirty and forty minutes. You right. know, so it doesn't take that long to go out there and do this stuff. It doesn't, but it's intimidating because a lot of folks go, "Well, I've never done a reel. I've never done a short. I've never done anything." This goes back to our previous part of the conversation and saying there's so many free opportunities. Go to YouTube, type in the best way to do a short, the best way to do this on an Android or a, or an iPhone or what or on a Mac or a PC computers, whatever. The information's there. You don't have to. Um, really overthink it. My girlfriend has a phenomenal, you know, saying or phrase or a state of mind that she has on anything she doesn't know how to do. And it kind of blew me away, made me stop. And everyone out listening to our voices are, you guys are intelligent humans, very intelligent. You're actively out there looking to grow. So think about this really quickly. If you see something always, and this is a very kind, not a very kind way of saying it, but you'll understand what I'm, what I'm going to say in a second. If you see someone doing something, and there's someone that might, in your opinion, not be the most intelligent human being on earth, but they're crushing it at that. She shifted her mindset and says, well, if that individual is doing it and they're not as smart as I am, and again, these are all air quotes and you know, state of mind, I can definitely do it. And then go out there and hunt it down, get the knowledge just floating above your head. All you have to do is learn how to reach out and grab it and pull it down and put it into your life. That's all it is. Just say, look, if one man can do it, another can do it, or a woman, whatever way we're going on this. But a human being can recreate whatever another human being has created. That's proven through history. Yeah. So that's what I look at. I say, well, you know what? If this person can do that, shoot, what's stopping me? And mainly it's just me. Yep. Yeah. Every time, dude. Right. So it's just, it's, you know, battling what's between our two ears. And, you know, believe, believe it or not, I mean, I didn't, I never created a, a short or, or, or I'm, I'm sorry, a story or a piece of short form content in my life until 60 days ago. 
get out of here. No, I, I just, yes. I, I've just always been long form, never did any of that shit. And then I was like, all right, dude, like, cause I've, you know, relied so heavily on paid ads and other things. I'm like, all right, like this is a huge opportunity that, I, that I'm not taking advantage of. Um, so then I went out there and I hired two, you know, full-time editors, right. 40 hours a week that just scrape on my long form to create all this stuff for me now. But then I was like, okay, this is a great opportunity for me to go eliminate any excuse that I have for any of my agents as to why they don't do it. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to go at this. I'm going to do a 30 day challenge where I post 27 pieces of content a day through the repurposing that I just talked about, but I didn't allow myself to use like any special equipment, nothing but my iPhone, mm -hmm. uh, no lighting, you know, again, nothing but my iPhone, um, uh, no posting tools, you know, right. like, like just like nothing that costs money, you know? So, so no editors, no nothing. And, you know, just to be able to, cause like for me, if I'm going to coach my agents, it's like, I need to know how to do this shit, you yeah. know, but I wanted to eliminate, cause I, those are the excuses. I don't know how to edit. You know, I don't have the thing. I can't afford the equipment or the posting tools or, you know, whatever. So I'm like, all right, like, I'm just going to go crush all of this. So they can't use his excuses anymore. And it was so <laughs> much easier than I ever fathomed. And it was, it was, it was scary. It was intimidating. Like yeah. my first, my first, uh, uh, reel was, I don't know. It was just like a, Hey, what's up everybody. Happy Friday. Joshua Smith, here, getting ready to do our a company training or whatever. And, but I was just honest. I'm like, honestly, I know I need to be doing these reels, the short form content. I don't know what the hell that I'm doing right now. But I figure I got to start somewhere. So I just want to start by saying hi. I hope you have a great weekend. Happy Friday. And dude, it, 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 thing, you know, getting like thousands of views between all the <laughs> platforms, you know, but I had so many people reaching out. Of, dude, appreciate the vulnerability. I'm in that same stuff. And I'm like, hey, let's just start this journey together. Yeah. So much easier. Like I created this thing in my head that this thing was going to be this big, complicated thing. And it wasn't. They make it simpler and simpler. And, and you and I fall in the same trap. I did the exact same thing. I was terrified of it because I... I, like you and I have mastered the long form game. We know how to do long form. That's that we can do it in our sleep, literally. Uh, short game, short form game. It, it, for me, it was terrifying because if I felt like I had to start all over again, and I didn't want to start all over again because I'm like, dang it, I already climbed this hill. I want to what I want to enjoy it, but you, in the social media and marketing and visibility game, you have to understand you got to be looking for the next new thing consistently and then adapting it into your into your your sphere or your your ecosystem and see if it fits. And if it does, great. If it doesn't, you know, cut it loose. You can't do everything in life, but you sure as heck can try everything and see how how it is. Because some, if something's hard for you and you're just not enjoyable, my opinion would be don't do it. You can find something you like that will, you know, resonate at a higher level because of your, the energy you put into it. Um, but you're right. It is just going on. Now, did you go on and go to each individual site and, and platform and post? So you, you, you shot a video, you saved it in your camera roll, and you brought it up. So TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, Twitter. I mean, what you pick your, your your social media. You didn't upload them with different titles and everything else and just post. Is that what you did? I'm yep, assuming. Yeah. So I, I, you know, optimize everything on Facebook because that's a juggernaut for real estate, right? So, mm -hmm. um, uh, but then, yeah, went in there, added the captions. Cause like you wouldn't go into Facebook, put in a reel, you just hit the caption thing, it auto reads it, adds the captions for you. Yep. Now, the only thing there that I did is because I found out in TikTok and, and cause I don't also, you, I don't, I don't allow myself to have any of those apps on my phone. So I have to be able to do all this from my computer outside okay. of Facebook, you know? Um, so then, um, you know, so then quickly I realized, okay, well, shit, I can't add these captions the same way on YouTube or TikTok, but Facebook, once it adds it, you click a button, allows you to download with the captions ingrained on that video right to your phone. And then, yeah, I just copy and paste. I write the caption or the, you know, the title once, copy it. Then I go next button. Because again, like now today I'm using an auto posting platform. I can schedule this stuff out months in advance and right. you know, all of this stuff that's doing it. But with that 30 day challenge, I, for, I wouldn't allow myself to do it because I didn't, you know, I get that, you know, like if I have a brand new agent, maybe they can't afford to go out there and pay the you know, whatever it costs for, for an auto posting platform. Um, yeah. So it was just go, go to this one, 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 you know? Um, but again, it's, it, dude, it's copy paste. It's quick. And yeah, we're like when the reels are uploading and rendering, like I'm cranking out emails cause that might take two minutes. So yeah. it's like, I'm just sitting there watching the screen, watching the fucking thing circle, you know, right? Like, circle no, of death. Yeah. Busy in between time. <laughs> you know, um, you know, when it comes to that. So, Hey, have you checked out, are you using like Opus AI at all? Yes. Okay. Playing with Opus yeah. quite a bit. I'm playing with, um, oh shoot. What is the name of this thing? There's another AI program I'm using quite a bit right now. And I'm doing it all for, um, for, uh, uh, uh what do you call it? YouTube videos and everything else. So I'm using a, a, a program and it's a, a Google plugin for, 
for you know AI stuff, and it's a uh, A I P R M. Yeah, A A I. Oh, damn, I always use A I P R M, and it has I think eight thousand different prompts in there, and it is fucking awesome. Yeah, I mean, holy shit! Yeah, when it comes to rewriting things, like I have my AI system today rewrite me uh 25 most used hashtags here in the san francisco bay area for residential resale then i said okay write me titles no i need those to be more sexy titles no i need, need them to be more engaging titles and i said okay good now now fill it full of seo words and give me a list per per city you know per question and it cranked it out in 15 seconds or less uh so that kind of uh that kind of ai work has been in 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 I can't even, I don't even want to think about not doing it anymore. Are you guys seeing that as well? The large impact with these different sites like that? Yeah. I mean, I haven't seen a, a huge impact on as far as like, I mean, it, if I want to say that, the, okay. The, the impact for me at least um, has just been removing the guesswork and, and really the time savings. You yeah. know, instead of sitting there coming up with all these ideas, I can just go into chat GPT and say, give me 50 TikTok ideas or 50 Instagram real ideas or 50 YouTube, you know, a uh, long form video ideas for, you know, real estate agent, creating content about moving to Phoenix, Arizona, you know, whatever that is, right. um, um, you know, it just saves a tremendous amount of time, you know, when it tremendous. comes to that. And then, yeah. And then like with Opus that we talked about Opus AI, it's like what, 20 bucks a month and you get like two hours of, of edits a month on that. But yeah, you, and, and I know you know what it is, but the audience may not. So <laughs> You have any YouTube video that you've created. Let's just say it's a 10 minute longer form video about the top 10 reasons to, to live in Peoria, Arizona. I take that link, I toss it in there, automatically will go out there and create all the short form videos for me, adds all the captions automatically. You know, even has, we'll have cuts in there of, 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 you know, jump cuts and, and, you know, somewhat in there. I mean, it's not perfect, you know, um, and then it's got its AI scoring in there. It'll tell you like, we think that this one will be the best engaging one. Here's the one that we recommend to utilize. But it's like, so like right now I'm still training my editors, you know, um, and, and we want to have at least 90 days of content banked before they start releasing it. Yeah. So like right now I've been using the hell out of Opus because I'm like, okay, I need to be releasing content until, you know, they start shooting this shit out for me. So it's been a great filler, but yeah, things like chat GPT, dude, it's, you know, like with drip campaigns, you know, auto responders. I mean, I use perfect storm in my software company. So I have clients that'll come in that have so many different unique lead sources that I don't have familiarity with. And we, you know, I help them come up with custom campaigns, it, but do like with chat GPT, dude, it's such a fucking lifesaver with all of that stuff, dude. It's I mean, a complete it, lifesaver. I mean, yeah. I so you you're talking about Opus. I was misunderstanding you. There was another one that's out there. Uh, so this is thirteen dollars a month, right? And he does all the posting for you. There's another one there. Gosh, I can't forget remember the name of it, but it uh, it's free for seventy five minutes every thirty days. So I put, put two like one hour clips in there, um, and you can rip out the 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 the, um, the, the stories and, and and so on and so forth. I, I got to tell you, once you start moving with this stuff the possibilities are literally endless on how you can put it into your business, but do slow, but do smart, do something that you're comfortable with, do something that you're never going to publish and you're just kind of see how it turns out. Don't not do this for goodness sake. I mean, start taking advantage of those, listen to the YouTube channels, you know, talk to professionals, reach out to Joshua and his team. I mean, my God, I mean, you got the systems down here. I mean, one of four, let, that is the takeaway for me right there. I mean, it's so simplistic, but it's so powerful because now the, there's no guessing. Then you go in and use Opus and you can rip out some of the, the additional content, make yourself really look good and shiny and, and keeping up with the big boys or big girls in your marketplace, whatever, wherever you live. If you just look around, I mean, Joshua, what would you do if you were a new agent? Let's say you had $200 budget, um, you know, to just start up. You had the essentials. This is just something that you want to spend. You want to do something just to stand out. And what, where would you spend 200 bucks? I'm just actually literally curious about this. Um, a, a CRM. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just, it'd be, you know, cause it's like, okay, I, I got Google drive. So I've got all my trackers and, and, you know, assuming Gmail, you know, then from there, okay, I need, you know, like give me, I need a decent website and a CRM. Um, um, you know, then from there with my, my strategies, open house equipment. Right. Cause it's, it's the quickest way to, to, you know, now business for now immediate business, at least has been for me. Um, then out there outside of that, dude, you know, go and get some of the equipment 
so it might take me a few months to save that, you know, that 200 bucks. To re- so the first thing I'd be investing in is equipment and systems, you know, um, um, and then from there, I'd save all the rest of the fucking money, you know, because once yeah. I have my open house equipment, I have the core systems that I need between social media and banging out open houses and, and picking up the damn phone. Like you can go out there and generate a seven figure a year business pretty damn fast without any other monetary investment. Yeah. You know, old school, old school, old school. There was a guy down in LA, just new agent. This is probably 15, 20 years ago at this point. This is before any social media crap. He went out and he picked an area in LA that was a hilly neighborhood. And this is where he lived. So he, he, he started door knocking and he didn't stop. Every single day, door knock, door knock, door knock, four or five months deep into this thing, night, no deals. He's just like, what am I doing? He wrote a newsletter to this area. He was doing exactly that, what social media is doing now. He was doing old school, you know, a lot more moving parts back then. And he got a listing. So a guy calls him and goes, hey, I want you to come list my house. And the guy's like, well, how'd you hear about me? He's like, I've been getting your newsletters forever. And I just want to touch base and say, look, we're ready to sell the house now. And how was your trip to Hawaii? Did your wife and your baby make the trip okay? Because he talked about it in his article. The point is, is that old school, new school, the tools are around you everywhere. Um, now, instead of doing a newsletter and having to get it, you know, write it, print it, stuff it, mail it, wait for wait for the return, you can record it, post it, interact with it, and then build a relationship instantaneously from anywhere that you sit. There's yep. no there's, there's no excuses not to be out there and be the most visible agent on God's green earth in your marketplace, in your niche right now. But you just got to get out of your own way. Like, Joshua, you got to have your own way. And you're like, I don't know what the fart knock I'm doing. But you know what? I'm going to say I'm vulnerable and I, I'm a little nervous at this moment. And you said people ate it up because you were yep. real. Yeah. So then when it comes to, because I want to get on some other topics here too. Sure. Um, when it comes to, <clears throat> you know, the social media posting, but that is specific to real estate. So we talked about the balance, but like, what, what are you seeing? Because again, people get cut, you know, stuck on the ideas of what do I post about? Right. You know, what are, you know, I don't know, a couple of your, your top few things that you consistently do that's real estate related that helps you go out there and get buyer and seller, you know, whether awareness or leads to actual deals when it comes to this content creation. Sure. A lot of the stuff that I, uh, that I really enjoy doing, I go to a site called neighborhood scout, uh, pretty much anywhere in the U S will be able to do this. So you go to neighborhood scout, don't put an address. You're going to put in a zip code. And so on the zip code, you're going to see an, a red outline of the, of that zip. And then inside that red outline, you're going to see multiple different colors. And these, these are micro markets within that master market of a, uh, of a zip code. So let's say that you are um, an open house. And so you, you'll you say uh, the zip code is 94596, uh, which is the zip code I live in. So I pull that up. I see the map. And then I go in and I say, okay, where's my address? Where's my address? Bam. I find the address. I find the street. Know where it is. I click on that colored area. I pull up that sub market area. Now it's going to have real estate. Now, the guys, the information on this, it's a, it's a broad sword. It's it's what's built to get a com- commun- uh, conversation started. It's not going to be highly specific. It couldn't be, but it's a, it's enough to be make you lethal. Uh, it's going to talk about real estate. It's going to talk about notable and unique people, places, ethnicity, ancestry, history, modes of transportation, occupation, um, a, 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 a few other things. But you can make two to three videos per subsection in that master zip code and you can create um one about the hit you know the real estate in that zip code so hey guys i'm here at an open house at on on market street uh the you know we're in the area known as bob's bob's hill um you know in this area you can start breaking down whatever you want to put in that video so with this new lavaliers with the Holly Land mics, I was thinking about taking that and going directly into neighborhoods. I've actually done going to neighborhoods, door knock, right? If you get a really nice neighbor, ask them to go on camera. 90% of the time, they're going to say no. But that 1%, they, they will say yes. And they talk about how much they love the area. Take that, repurpose it with their written permission onto, the social, onto social media. And that is one thing that I've done very effectively because people love to hear about the ins and outs of a neighborhood. You know, do you guys do 4th of July parades or barbecues in the area? Is there a secret walking path to this, you know, you know, river or pond? You know, where's the greatest hiking trails? Or did you know that Mary Beth around the corner has an apple tree that won't stop giving apples? You can go grab them anytime you want. Like small, small stuff. It re- really makes you, makes you stand out. So using Neighborhood Scout is something that's been really, very, very helpful for me. Um, I also took that information and I printed it out, put my, my headers you know, and footers on it, 
um, I asked chat GTP to condense the article and give me 10 major talkable you know, points when at open houses, notable, unique, and interesting things. So we did it and I printed it out and I, and I asked everybody to come through like, Hey guys, if you're, are you new in the area? Yes, we are. Great. Here's a flyer of some of the top inter most interesting things here in the area to know about. And everybody walked out with my information with some piece of knowledge they did not have. And then I tested that and I went and put it on camera. I did a story on it. And I said, Hey guys, quick little facts about, you know, Alamo, California, but if you want more, you know, make sure you reach out to me. My number is so on and so forth. It was so easy because it was written for me. The information was there. I had chat break it down for me. I then printed it out, gave it hard copy. Then I turned that and I shared it with everyone and said, Hey, if you miss my open house at this street at this price and you, you missed out this flyer, I can send you a copy. I actually got people that actually interact with me. Um, and that is one of the easiest things that we've been doing, not to mention interviews with local folks. And then uh, this week I'm launching a uh, man on the street real estate edition. Anytime there's some sort of breaking information, like the uh, National Association's uh, top dog got his, uh, got himself in a little bit of trouble the other day about some sort of sexual misconduct with fellow uh, workers. I saw the headlines. That would get, huh? That NAR? Yeah, NAR's president. No shit. Yeah. And so that's the kind of stuff I'm going to get, get, read, barf my opinion back out. Like, Hey guys, if you don't know, the NER president just got his hand in the caught in the cookie basket, and uh, it's not looking good. Here's what I read, you know, something like that. People, all right, this guy's got his thumb on the on the what's going on in the marketplace, what's going on in the industry. It's relatively interesting because you never know what's going to come out of his mouth next. And so both buyers and sellers are looking at me, going, "Well, this guy knows what's happening. He knew he's a he's a he studies his industry. He knows hyper local information about the marketplace." Um, and he's been doing the business for a long time, or if you're not an agent that's been doing it for a long time, use your brokerage numbers. Like, hey, his brokerage has been in the area for 56 years. He has to be good because he keeps on saying all this cool information that nobody has ever shared with me. I've gotten calls from around the country moving into my area going, go watch your stuff on YouTube and on Facebook. And we just, we last, since the last video you told us to contact you, so we're going to reach out to you and see if you're for real. I'm like, yeah. of course I'm for real. What are you, are you kidding me? I'm not doing this shit for my fucking health. I'm out here trying to get some business, change some lives, get some information, and everybody gets to win at it. Yeah, but yeah, neighborhood scouts awesome. It's one of my absolute favorites. Yeah, it's epic, dude. And 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 it, you know, for anybody that's watching or listening, if that's you know, like if you're just getting started with this, you're like, oh, maybe that's a little bit too advanced. You know, um, you know, well, well, a couple things here. I mean, number one, I love hearing you doing that, dude, because it goes back to your earlier point of look, you got to test a lot of different things. Like that strategy could crush it or it could shit the bed. You don't know yeah. until you go out there and test and try it. But it's like every time I talk to you, one of the reasons I love talking with you and having you come back on the podcast is you're all, I mean, you've been in those 24 years and you're always testing new things, <laughs> you know? Um, uh, so then, you know, it's like, like just, pro, you know, fast forward to property tours. Or we do a lot of like, okay, you got this badass kitchen, mm -hmm. you know, like, like check out this dream kitchen. What are your thoughts? You know, and just put some cool music behind it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you know, I mean, there's so many cool things that you can do, man. Key delivery, showing your your clients get their keys and celebrating the close. You know, just it's just that constant reminder of, hey, I'm in real estate. Hey, I'm in real estate. Yeah, right to your 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 social CRM. Yes, yes. You know, the key of the key of the key to winning. What I've found, and I've read a lot of business books, a, a variation of this comment is, you know, if you never stop communicating, you never lose. And so, a lot of us, you know, we think, well, I have two listings, a listing, five listings. I'm the number one in my marketplace, whatever it is, you know, like everybody knows me. No, they, they don't. You have to consistently drip on them. Like you said, your mom's going to forget about you that you're in real estate. My mom actually almost didn't. She even worked in our real estate team. Um, but the thing is, is if you're always out there saying hi, hello, they might think that you're like a movie star. You just, you know, make so much money because that's the misconception of real estate agents that you make so much money. You're on your thousand foot yacht sailing around the world, you know, eating caviar, drinking champagne. In reality, you're eating a bag lunch, sitting at your desk, stressed out, wearing the same clothes from yesterday. Your feet hurt because you door knocked for three hours and 115 degrees. You haven't seen your kids or your wife in 48 hours and you have a mortgage payment. Sometimes that shit is, will drive you more than anything else, but if you consistently show a true you, your real struggles, your real life, people will come to you because they're like, dude, I got to help this homie out. Or you 
you know, you give me all this information. My kids went to this park that you suggested and they loved it. Or, you know, my grandmother passed away. We need someone that I trust like you because you've been in the area for so long. Constantly communicate. Don't, and find that line. Do you want to do it five times a day? Like Joshua, you were suggesting, do you want to do it one day a week or one day just to start? Just begin, please. Otherwise you will be wiped away uh, like the, the sands of time because all those younger agents that know this stuff like the back of their hand will mop up your marketplace if you do not take action. And I can promise you that. So please, please don't be that agent. Yep, hundred percent, dude. Okay, so shifting directions here. Okay. You know, um, I mean, because you 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 do a lot with so you know the social game, but then you still you know kind of the old school tried and true methods, man. Of you're pounding those phones, dude. Still doing a lot of cold calling. Now, my my first question here is with your cold calling. What have, with the numbers themselves? What have you seen with the differentiation with this low transaction volume climate that we're in? You know, because I mean, nationwide, there's 37% lesser transactions taking place. Each of our markets are slightly different, but we're all seeing it. We're all experiencing it. So how has that shifted? And how's that, that, that like, I mean, has that just resulted in, hey, man, I got to do a hell of a lot more volume with my cold calls to get the same results? Yeah, uh, it's also being strategic on the people you call. Um, a lot of times with the old fishing analogy, when when, you, when you're throwing your line into a pond and the, you're not catching anything, you mean the pond's probably dry. I want to find a different pond, aka a different lead source. So we were seeing um, our lead sources with expireds and for sale by owners and for rent by owners. It was our kind of our go-to. I, I call with a group of guys and I call them the, the, the team of assassins. The, the, these guys are these guys are surgical and lethal. All different types of personalities, all different calling methodologies, uh, different using different systems around the country. These guys crush. And what we all found together is that as of this recording right now, we, sh we, we saw a huge influx in the calling around just pendings. Um, and for those of you guys who aren't familiar with that, it's something I tried a number of years ago because I got, I ran out of stuff to call, right? You don't call so many just listed, just sold. What's the one thing that people do not have access to at their fingertips like we do? It's the just pending data. So I go in and I will uh, go into my MLS and I'll pick out the just pendings. I'll sort by, sort by days on market. And then I'll say, okay, lowest amount of days with the highest possible list price, right? Then I pick up the, 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 the phone and I'll say, Hey, Josh, it's Greg, brother. How are you, man? Hey, I, your, uh, your house on Maple Street, beautiful property. I see you on pending, man. Congratulations. How many offers did you get on that thing? Sometimes they'll tell you, sometimes you won't, they won't, but you know, at least there was one. And if they tell you there are more, then you have a new script. You can call in. This is the script that was so, has been so effective for us. I say, um, hey, my name is Greg McDaniel with EXP Realty. Um, actually, no, hold on. Let me back that up. I actually switched to a new script, which is 13 seconds delivery time which makes you crush through stuff super fast. So it's like, hey, my name is Greg. I'm a, I'm a local real estate agent, insert name of city, the properties listed in, in Walnut Creek. Hey, I wanted to call and just see if you're thinking about selling your property at 456 Maple. Well, yes, well, no. And they're like, well, why are you calling? Well, because your neighbor around the street, around the corner just went pending and they did it in uh, about, well, whatever numbers, like say two days and they had, let's say three offers on it. So that means there more, there's two more buyers that are willing to spend very good money in the area. And I was wondering if you thought about maybe even selling your home. Some variation of that has been able to put, like yesterday I was doing a live calls with that exact script and I picked up, th two, no, three. No, I got two solid listing appointments with the tentative third. Uh, my buddy Paul Black, I was calling with, he has three listing appointments set for this weekend, plus another two potentials from yesterday's 25 minute calling doing that exact same script. And he's up in the mountains in, in Southern California in a lake town. I'm in San Francisco. We couldn't be any more polar difference and it worked. Both of them got phenomenal responses. So that's one of the new tweaks. It's, it goes back to always be shifting and testing and, and tweaking. So if you're not getting good responses from whatever source you're using now, Pivot a little bit. Ask a question. Look what someone else is doing. What are you guys doing? How are you making it work? Go out there and network with your fellow agents. You'll pick up something that you you can put into your business really pretty quickly, and it hopefully it won't cost anything to 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 shift a little bit. Yeah. Now, some people that are maybe new to this, they might ask, well, "What do you get your data from?" You know, call those neighbors. So I use a system called Red X. I've been using Red X for oh god, five, seven, eight years. Uh, they are they are phenomenal. And the reason why I like Red X so much is the fact that they have a system and a product, product built in that let's say you're new in the business 
never done a cold call or you're kind of getting your feet back into the you know the water of making calls we can call into their practice dialer system and you can pick any kind of call you want to make through whatever you've selected that you own the leads for uh, and then these they'll ask you do you want it easy medium or hard and you select and then you, they'll you can start your your pitch and then the person will give you an easy medium or hard you know pushback they'll record it and then they'll send it to you. And every single time you do a recording with them or a practice session, you will get a positive outcome. But the most important thing is, and why I write, like Red X so much, and I've, and I've played with this tool. It's, it's so much fun to listen to. Then they'll send it to you. Now you can hear your tonality and delivery. So not only you, can you do a three line with all the data you could ever imagine you would ever want or need, now you can practice with a real human, get the, get the playback of it. So if you're on a team and you're trying to get better, or if you have a team and you want your agents to get better, you can put them through this with Red X and, you know, listen to the recordings. There's no more fibbing of like, well, yeah, I made my calls. Did you? Did you really? Are you sure about that? So that's why I like them. The customer service is amazing. And it's super simple to use and very, very affordable. So that's that's who I use. So with Red X, you know, because I, I when I think of Red X, I think of expired and physical data. But they also have... You know, because I've used cold directory forever, but they, it's, oh, awesome. you know, um, but the, you know how like you can build out the fucking map and then that yep. way you could get all the neighbors. Red X has that same kind of neighborhood. Yeah, 100% of geo mapping uh, part That's of it. Awesome. Yeah, you, you can go in, like I said, get your number, your address, so 456 Maple. That's the one that went pending, right? Plop it in. They ask you 50, 100, 200, 300, 500, whatever the number is going to be. You can do that as a geographical area a circle around it, or you can go in and map it out so you can get specific either sides of a street or specific neighborhood. You can get as detailed as you want to extract all the information out. And they also have for uh, for rent by owners, which I thought was, I'm like, what what am I going to call a for rent by owner for? I mean, why would I even why would I even do this? Um, and then what I found with with for rent by owners, it is actually my favorite thing to call because there's three potential wins on one phone call. So I can either help you rent it. I can help you sell it, or if you want to keep them and you don't need help renting, great. I can maybe help you buy an additional rental opportunity or talk to one of your friends because birds of a feather flock together. It's a high probability that if they have a bunch of investments, their buddies probably have one or two or want to have one or two. Yeah. So that's kind of how I, 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 I use the, the dialer on a consistent basis with these different types of conversations. And it's, it's unbelievable how you, when you talk to a for rent buyer, they're just like, well, yeah, it is for rent. No, I haven't rented it. Would you, and then, would you want to sell it if I could give you a good number? No. Would you want to buy another property like it or the better return? Yeah. Great. What's your best information? You'll pick up buyers very quickly. So you can build your portfolio, which I have right here, called my little black book of leads. It's all my little, I'm old school. This is the thing I travel with everywhere. Uh, it's very tactile um, and I can flip through it and get be reminded about my investors without having to go into my iPhone in case I lose power. It's just the way I do it. I just like a digital, I mean, a hard copy with me, but I'll just go around and I'll just recontact these folks. Say, Hey, look, you guys check out this new content. It was a new video. Or do you guys know that uh, I just talked to a guy that, you know, has a property that he's uh, maybe he wants to sell or even or I have some finance guys in my lead book. Hey, this guy might need to talk to you about, you know, doing a JV with you guys in your firm to take down this potential investment or build that property. So it's just the calls will flood in, just start funneling them into the right silos, using these calls, using Red X, using whatever, you know, Vulcan, using Mojo, you, whatever you like, right? Just get out there and be public with these things. But I'm, I'm definitely 100% a Red X guy because of my experience with them. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm talking to so many agents that I know you do as well right now. And, and you know, so many, they're just man, my business is down. I don't know what to do. I, but then I'm like, what are you doing? You know, like, like, and that's a legitimate question. Not like a, uh, like what the hell's wrong with you? Like, a, like, no, like, what are you, what are you doing? Like walk me through your average day. Like, and, and the amount of action that they're not taking, it's like, okay, well, you know, no wonder, but you know, we start, but yeah, I mean, it's a little bit more of a challenging market right now today because of the, the, you know, just lower inventory and lower transactions. But man, I mean, if you spent, I was having a conversation with a buddy yesterday, I'm like, you know, cause he, he needs to be closing two homes a month mm -hmm. and now he's, you know, historically done really good with Fizbo's, but he just wasn't doing enough volume to transition this market. And I, I, we just broke down the numbers. I'm like, dude, three hours every day. That's between, you know, calling new and nurture. Um, but then, you know, like we started breaking down his numbers where it came down to exactly how many Fizbo, physical, physical conversations he needed to have with his strategy. Cause his strategy converts at 10%, you know, but just wasn't doing enough volume of that. But like, I look at this as like, okay, with expireds, 
Fizbo's, <clears throat> like you just mentioned, by owners, which that's the first time I've you know heard that strategy. So I fucking love that. I'm gonna start <laughs> pounding the shit out of that. Um, uh, but absentee owners, I know before we hit the record button, we were talking about short term vacation. You know mm-hmm. your Airbnbs. You know, I mean, there's just so many people to go out there and, and get the business to be had. We just might have to do more volume of the calls today. You you're gonna you will have to step them up. I and mean, there's also different days and different times. To, that you're really going to see a big return. Like you always play at the different times. So is it morning, midday, or afternoon, or evening? What are you going to, what's going to be best for your market? For me, 3.30 to 6.30, my time in the afternoons is going to be my prime hit. Either that or the, about 10, you know, 10 to about noon or one. Those are my two pockets in my area. So one is the folks that are, you know, the 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 the, the pair, of the, the, the one of the couple that's going to be staying at home, you know, with the kids or whatever it's going to be. They're getting their day going. They got the kids out the door. They got a workout in. They got some food in their stomach, a shower. They're ready to roll by minimum, by late, by 10, right? So it's good to start calling then. Uh, for the expireds, I mean, everyone I know is calling at eight and they're actually getting good responses. But just for open, just circle prospecting 10 to one because up to one, then people are coming back home for lunch. Then leave the, the middle of the day alone and I start calling like four, 4.30 to about six, 6.30. And that's when everyone's coming home. It's not quite dinner time yet but there's still an open conversation that can happen. And um, between those two, that's, that is my prime hit time. Are you guys seeing the similar time frames in Arizona or what do you Yeah. Guys yeah. I mean, you know, a- afternoons best, you know, um, right. kind of that. I mean, very similar. I mean, you know, four to six thirties, like when we really hound on those uh, morning time, dude, like kind of that eight to about 10, eight to 10 30. Now a lot of our okay. stuff is inbound, um, you know, but afternoons definitely the, when I say definitely better, I mean, slightly better. Um, but I like to focus and what I try to get my agents to do is focus on the mornings, right? Mm-hmm. And, and not that, okay, if we have time available for the afternoons and evenings, but I've just found it's like, you know, eat your frog first, man. You know, Brian, Tracy, yes. right? where it's just like, get the hard shit done early in the day. So it's like, I want them to have all their lead gen, lead follow up and all the technical things that they need to get done for that day you know, by noon. So the rest of the day could be client times, meetings, appointments. If they have filler time, okay, then keep calling, you know, but yes. it's so easy to get disruptions later in the day, you know, where fires just get disrupted, get thrown off for a game. I'm like, just get the shit done early, you know, right? E- e- so for me, I'll sacrifice even a little bit of, a, of you know, call answer rates um, just to make sure it gets consistently done each and every day, five days a week. Yeah, I in, in once you, the premise behind everything you said, which was awesome, is, the, is, is know, knowing that what you're doing is dollar productive, right? So you have some sort of solid base to stand on. Because if you, if you stand on sand, you're going to get washed away. If you got to stand on a concrete base of knowledge of going, look, my time is not here to play around. If I want to play around, I'll go with my buddies on the boat, drink a couple of beers, you know, get a sunburn and call it a day. This is work time. And so something that, I, uh, that my father built for me a number of years ago is a tracking calling sheet. Now, a lot of people have these, but the, what's so powerful about this is that right now, based upon the, the, the cause I just restarted my sheet the other day. So I have, let's see how many days I've on this. I have one, two, three, four, five, five or six days. And within that time frame, um, I have uh, some secured one CMA and I have five others that are thinking about maybe buying or selling. Now it doesn't send a lot on an initial sheet of paper, but uh, you, you scroll down to the bottom and let's say I stick to these numbers, right? And I consistently do those numbers on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. Well, I know that I'm going to talk to 45,689 total attempts, which is means that those are my dials, which means I'm going to talk to 9,156 people, right? Now that's going to transfer. If I have a 5% conversion rate of those folks at the end of the year, I'm looking to do potentially of the 22, per, 22 deals at a 5% conversion rate. Let's say my average price is 900,000 at a two and a half percent commission. I'm working 40 weeks a year out of the 52. So I'm working 72% of the year when weeks I'm calling five days a week with uh, doing, let's say, you know, at least at three hours. So let's do three hours of calling five days a week. Right. Well, that just shifted all of my numbers. I just talked about in regards, except for my, um, sorry, the only thing that shifted on my numbers when I changed it for three hours from one hour is that I went from 22 deals to 67 deals. Um, And the numbers that really, really kick you right in the hoo-hoo is the lead cost. No, no, sorry, the the every door or every call is worth $11. I mean, every time, if the phone rings, it thinks worth $11. Every person, a conversation I have is $55 worth to me. Every uh, minute I am doing prospecting is worth $42. My hour 
uh, is worth $2,500 and every lead is worth $1,125 with a potential revenue of $1,500,000. Um, and people are like, well, that's, I could never achieve that. I can't do three hours. I'm like, you can't work three hours a day to prospect to make one, one and a half million dollars. Okay, let's dumb it down. Let's go to one hour a day, five days a week. Great. You'll make $500,000. You're in the one percentile of the U.S. income earners. If you spend an hour, that is only 4% of your day. Spend 4% of your day doing calls five days a week with a conversion rate of 5%. And your numbers can go through the roof. I mean, instantaneously. And then you're motivated to do the stories, do the, do the social media, do the YouTube videos, do the calls, do the doors, do the networking, you know, do the follow-up because you know you're worth $2,500 or whatever that is per hour. You can stack four doctors on top of each other and they'd still almost make that much an hour. And that's you being comfortable doing something you love in an environment that, you're, you, you, that you understand and you only have up to go. So let's say you're at 5%, nothing else changes. You're doing one call, one hour of calling five days a week. Let's say you go from 5% conversion. You listen to, you know, the GSD uh, podcast. You get in Joshua Smith's inner circle. You really start gaining some knowledge that he bestows upon you guys. And all of a sudden you go from five to a 7% conversion rate. That 2% just earned you another $200,000 a year, AKA 700,000 potential revenue by becoming 2% smarter or better at converting. Now, if you just heard me go through that and that doesn't make you want to track your numbers, I'm sorry. That, I mean, that gets me excited. wants me to, I want to get back on the dial like now and start making calls because I know the value that's going to bring my family, bring, put some money in the, in the account for the family. Yeah, yeah, I love get. Well, I mean, number one, I'm a tracking freak. So it's, I know that's why I didn't like, you know, that out. Smart <laughs> in their business. But then, too, I love the gamify it, you know, because I'll go to my <laughs> agents and they'll be like, man, I'm just sick of these people telling me to fuck off, you know, and then I'll be like, all right, I'll look at their data and then I'll be like, okay, if I pull out a hundred dollar bill right now and the, the agreement is, I can tell you to fuck off to your face right now, but then I, I'm going to give you this hundred dollar bill if you tell me to, that I can say, fuck, you know, tell you to fuck off. And everybody's like, well, hell yeah, I would take that deal. I look at their numbers. I'm like, it's the same fucking thing. Like every time you get told to F, essentially not, maybe it's not even F off. It's just every time you get told no, yeah. that's a hundred bucks. Yes. You know, right. Like when you start to gamify that, know your numbers and start to you know break down. Okay. Well, what is like every time that phone rings, what's that worth? Every time somebody picks it up, even if it's a wrong number of fuck off, what's that worth? Every time I set an appointment, what's that worth? Every time I conduct it, what, you know, I, it's, it becomes really powerful, you know, when it comes to that. And then, um, the biggest obstacle that I see with people is just not staying consistent to doing the work. They'll say they want the income. They say they want the money. They, they, you know, maybe have the scripts down and, and that stuff. But like, what do you do to ensure that you are consistently day in and day out being consistent with the work? I have a blue collar mindset. And what I mean by that, I mean, no disrespect to any human being that works their tail feathers off. But we are independent contractors for the most part. And so we have the independent contractor mindset. I can do what I want when I want because I'm my own boss. Change your mindset. Do you think the trucker who's driving for Amazon or Target or uh, beer companies or anyone else or a freighter or anything like, do they? Do you think that they feel like getting up and sitting in that chair for 12, 18 hours, however long they drive every day? No, they do it because they had a job to do because there's a goal they're trying to achieve. So when you say put on a, a, a blue collar mindset, understand that a lot of folks do something that they don't like to do every day, but they do it because they want a certain quality of life. And there is no parachute for a lot of folks. You have the luxury of building a parachute. You have the luxury of making your own time, but that is a double-edged sword. So when I don't want to do something, I get on WhatsApp, I get a hold of my assassin squad, and I say, hey, guys, who's calling? And usually there's at least one or five of the guys who are calling. And like on the 4th of July, we were calling in the morning. I'm like, what crazy motherfuckers are calling people on, you know, 4th of July morning to talk about real estate. A couple of the guys set appointments for this week because they called them on the phone. So if you want to shift guys, just understand that like when Joshua, when you started your podcast, when I started my podcast, I looked up and I'm like, how in the shit do we do this? I mean, is anyone going to listen to us? I mean, how do we even do this? 
and Matt, my former partner in this, in the podcasting business, um, you know, we just looked at each other and said, okay, well, Gary V took 18 months to really kind of take any, any traction with wine library. That's our goal. 18 months. We'll put our heads down, not look around, not look up, not give a shit what the person's doing next to us. Just trudge on and learn from our mistakes, trip over our own toes, fall flat on our face. That's fine. We'll pick ourselves up and keep moving. But not looking around and not caring gave us a superpower of saying, look, we're just creating for us. So for real estate agents, have that superpower of saying, look, I'm not going to care what Bob's doing in the cubicle next to me. Just start grinding out what you like to do, what's productive for you to build your business. And if someone says that it's not going to work, tell them to go fuck off. Because what they're truly saying to you is, is they're saying they're not willing to do it or they can't do it. Not that it's not possible. They aren't going to do it. And they're afraid if you do it, you're going to take their business. Now take that on for a little bit of a, a mental ride. If someone tells you to go, you know, you're a loser, you can't do this, you can't do that, they're terrified of you. Use that energy, crush it, become the dominant agent that you deserve to be in your marketplace by simply shifting and taking action. Yep. <clears throat> I love it, dude. Yeah, I mean, because it's to your point earlier when you were talking about your 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 you know tracker and the formulas where you can plug in the different. Yeah, I mean, essentially, it's a business plan creation, to, you know, right? And then I'm yeah. sure as you're plugging in your real data, you know, gets accurate, to, you know, towards oh. you. But it's like you break that down. It's not fucking that difficult to go out there and do, you know, really break this down. Like none of this shit is that hard. And and you know, to what we were talking about earlier, of the time that we are in, it's like, you know, like we can figure out how to become an expert in anything in almost, you know, what two hours on a Sunday with Google. <laughs> yeah, you know, really. so, exactly. You know, I, I get people like, well, I don't know how to build out a tracker. I'm like, well, I didn't either, but I fucking went on a Sunday afternoon, looked on YouTube, watched a couple hours of videos, had it down, and now I'm a fucking whiz at building that shit. It's like <laughs> anything can be learned so fast. You know? So fast. You know, um, it was Anthony Hopkins and Alec Baldwin were in a movie, The Edge. It was yep. years ago. The premise is they got the, you know, Anthony Hopkins is the billionaire and, you know, uh, what's his nuts? Uh, Alec Baldwin was like his assistant, but he's, there's a dynamic there where, anyway, it doesn't matter. They went to, they would got on a plane to go to a photo shoot location, crash in the woods. A bear starts chasing him around. Alec Baldwin is losing his shit. Anthony Hopkins goes, well, I'm going to kill the fucking bear. And Anthony's, I mean, uh, Alec's like, what do you mean? He's in, in Anthony Hopkins said the one line that has stuck with me forever in a, in a lifetime. He goes, if one man can do it, another can do it. And he starts chanting us and chanting us and chanting us. And they're in the middle of the woods, never kill the bear. We're talking a you know, book nerd, billionaire, and a philanthropist kind of playboy. Like, these motherfuckers don't know how to do shit in the woods. But Anthony Hopkins read a lot. He learned a lot. And he put that into action. So you guys can do the same thing. Follow Joshua's you know, advice. Get onto Google, get onto YouTube, read this stuff, and then chant in your brain. If one man can do it, another can do it. If one woman can do it, another woman can do it. You guys can do it. Get out of your headspace. There's a deadly dangerous space up there. And just know that you have the power, the knowledge, the resources, and the smarts to do it right now. And never give a flying fuck if someone tells you you can't. Use it as power. But yeah. I mean, if one man can do it, another can do it. I think that the the issue a lot of people have today, and when I say this, when I say I think it's just from my conversations with a lot of you know newer agents today, is that you know like you, when you and I got in the industry, dude. I know we're <laughs> I'm aging us here a little bit, um, <laughs> you know, but it was like, dude, none of this shit. Like we didn't. There was no podcast. There was no YouTube. There was no social media. There weren't even smartphones. You know, and 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 all of those things have been these blessings that allow us to go out there and 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 leverage and do so much more in business. But the negative component is the massive distractions. You know, yeah. I was having a conversation with a coaching client yesterday, and he's like, well, I was watching this podcast about this, this podcast about this, this. And I'm like, dude, like, we're just going to simplify this right now. I just want you doing these two things each and every single day. Just forget about all that other bullshit. Just block that in your mind. That stuff doesn't exist. Just do these two things and only these two things consistently each and every day, and boom, you will crush it. You know, yeah. but it's so easy to get, you know, that shiny penny object, you know, syndrome and, and just get distracted and you know, it, it becomes a whole superpower in its own of, of having to block out fucking distractions anymore. It, it is, it really is. And, uh, you know, you, you remember Howard Britton and star power. Oh yeah. Like, dude, Howard would always say at his conventions, he said, would you be like a three day convention? So you'd take a piece of paper from every day, every breakout. So it'd be probably four sections there and you write, you know, what the, what the breakout was then three ideas you had for, for two to three days. Last day, going back to your point, is is that look? You have all these opportunities in front of you. They're all great, but pick like two or four. 
one per quarter or one every six months and implement it into your business and become a, uh, an absolute master at that one, at that one to two things. Because like you and I could be doing a hundred different things right now, but it's scatterbrain mentality. Like it's shotgun, not laser, not sniper. And if you want to clip off the big, the big targets, the big listings, the big marketplace share, the big, whatever it's going to be, you've got to be the best in a couple of things, not everything. It's okay not to be perfect at everything. And that's my, that's my opinion. I mean, Joshua, do you feel the same way? Or do you yeah. like well, everybody be a master of, of all? I mean, what's your you know, kind of thought? No, yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's like mastery happens or, or you know, I'll even take it. A, a, okay. Success is not doing a thousand things once it's doing a few things thousands of times becoming brilliant at those few things so you know i i come amongst the philosophy of le less is more yeah i would rather do less things so then that way i can truly master those things and do those things more frequently and more consistently you know so like i want you know, like if i have a brand new agent that joins my team we're looking at depending on what their capacity is with their schedule and you know their, their past experience but it's like you know, we'll identify, you know, one, maybe two, but either, you know, but at least one, one to two immediate now business strategies, and then one to two for their long game. And that's it. It's just like, you know, so either they're going to have two, three or four, like if they're a killer that has a lot of sales experience and they pick up this stuff fast and they got 80 hours a week to go out there and grind. Okay. In that situation, they might be taken for like most of my new agents coming on. It's we're focused on two to three things you know, um, that don't compete against each other. So that might be, you know, their social media strategy plus open houses. Like mm -hmm. they don't conflict, they don't compete. But then it's just like, like when people tell me, well, you know, like with open houses, I'm like, dude, like, I mean, that's all I did my first year, 48 deals. That's right? a lot of deals. But I mean, I was crushing, you know, four to five open houses every single week. People hear that, oh, you got your first client in your first four days of this business. Well, I did, that was my fourth open house. You know, like I was <laughs> lining them up. Now I was smart enough, I guess, just from past jobs and experiences where as I was going through real estate school, I was already, you know, I knew I needed to learn from people that were, were the doers and getting big results. So, you know, as soon as I started real estate school, I mean, I started interviewing the top of the top that I could find in our market and just, you know, so then that, the day that I started, like I already had my business plan. I already knew exactly what to execute on and do. So like, I was already ready to fucking go, you know? Right. Um, but then, I mean, that was all I did do was just, and I didn't start. The only reason that I started to expired in my after about 18 months in my career was because I was doing so many open houses. I spent so much damn time because I didn't have any listings. I just had all these buyers. Right. You know, um, oh, I spent so much time and it, and it was not just the time, but it was also wasn't always a guaranteed open house because they, you know, they might cancel it on me or whatever, you know. Um, so I'm like, dude, I'm spending like 10 hours a day just trying to get my open houses set up or not 10 hours a day, 10 hours a week. Right. I'm like, let me just shift that time to calling expired. I didn't give a fuck about selling them, you know, right. That was just like icing on the cake to me, you know, right. Like meaning the commission income from that. Of course I wanted to sell them for my clients, but, right? You no, know, it was just so I could have more storefronts. And then that became my second pillar. And then it was, dude, it was just fucking expired and open houses, you know, and that brought me to 103 deals and 323 deals and, you know, kept growing and then expired and bleeding to short sales. You know, and then the market yeah. shifted and changed. So then it became short sales and REO, you know? So, um, but yeah, I mean, le less is more, dude. Okay. So there's something that I, you glazed over because you've done, you've said this, uh, that story a thousand times, but I, it's something that I picked up on it really quickly is the fact that uh, I'm like, what triggered me, I'm like, well, you're doing four to five open houses uh, a, a, a week, but you're a new agent, you don't have anything. And then you said it in the latter part of your conversation there that you would just call the expireds. And you didn't give a shit if you sold it. You, I love it. You called and you wanted to sit, do an open house for an expired property, right? Is that was that your plan? And then get four to five of those guys set up on a weekly basis. So were you doing those on Saturdays and Sundays, or were you doing those Mondays, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday? No, I mean the only day that I found that I wouldn't really do them was Mondays, just because my show rate was so so poor at them. Yeah. Um, you know, which makes sense. Um, yeah. you know, so I I would try as much as I could for Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. But if I had a Tuesday or Wednesday. I mean, ideally I would have, I would have had six a week, but that was very hard to line up, you know, yeah, but, but four, four a week was pretty easy for me to line up. That's an aggressive ass schedule, but it's, but it's so doable because what I love about that so much as a new agent uh, is the fact that imagine this, Hey guys, you know, Joshua, I'm going to call you at your house is one, two, three main street. They just came off the market. Hey Joshua, it's Greg with uh, ABC Realty. I'm calling you. I saw your property came off the market. I honestly don't want to list your home. Not one bit. I just want to hold it open and see if I can bring you a buyer. I mean, that's a very, that's a very simplistic script, but was it, was it something like that, that you use? And the reason why I ask is that I'm going to personally try this in my marketplace. No, no. You know, I, I do that for Fizbo's. Okay. Right. Um, now that wasn't something I did back then. This is, you know, 
morphed. Th this came about actually after the great financial crisis. So that was something okay. we started doing about 10 years ago. Um, but that's one of our very effective for sale by owner strategies now is we reach out to the FISBOs. So we have a free resource kit that we give them and then we offer um, uh, to hold their house open for them. To increase, and we just tell them the benefits of this, but I just let them know, hey, look, I'm going to give you all the leads. I'll, I'll keep, retain the leads too. I'll give you all the leads. If there's any buyer that wants to purchase your property, I'll give you the buyer. You take the buyer. I'm not going to ask for any part of that commission or any of that. I get and respect what you're trying to do, sell your home on your own without having to pay that big commission. I get it. I respect it. And I'll tell them, look, even though I'm a licensed realtor between you and I, when I sell my own homes here locally, I hate paying that big commission too. So I yeah. get it. I honor, I respect it. You know, um, And I'm just upfront with them because nobody, nobody, like it's like there's that, Oh, it's too good to be true. You mm -hmm. know, so I'll just let them know of, of, look, the reason why I'm doing this. Look, okay, let's just say with my average open house, you know, we get you know, 35 plus people through each open house. So let's just say I you know, ho hold your home open. We get 35 couple or 35 people through. So one person wants to buy your property. I give that person to you. You go write your offer. You don't owe a commission on that. Boom, you win. Now I got 34 other people that came through that are looking for a home. A lot of those don't have a realtor. Your home, for whatever reason, didn't meet all of their needs. Like I'm going to get clients out of this too. This is a way for us, like you to get more exposure to your property, to go out there and hopefully get an offer for your property, get your home sold, save that commission. You win. I'm going to go out there and get clients out of this and make a bunch of money too. So this is just a win-win opportunity. And when you explain it to them in that way, they're like, okay, it makes sense. Now we end up doing, it takes four conversations to get a listing or an open house booked on them. You know, so- 75% will reject us for that, for whatever reason. Um, um, but then we end up listing 38% of those in, in this given market. It used to be higher, but mm -hmm. it's just lesser today, just because FISBOs are having more of success of selling on their own, um, that end up turning into that listing. But then from there, we don't get it right away after we do the listing. That's just to develop the relationship, develop the rapport. Um, we you know, provide them our free FISBO kit, which is like blank contracts and things to help them have success on their own. And then we just stay in touch with them every week. You know, hey, how are you doing? Just checking in. I mean, any traffic, any questions for me? We just position ourselves as that resource. You right. know, um, no, with expireds, what I meant by that, and I apologize about the confusion was, no, I would, I would attack them for the listing. But when okay. I but I get that listing, I just wanted that listing. You know, yeah, I wanted to go out there and sell their homes. But the main, the whole only reason I started doing that and going after going after those expires is because I, I needed my own storefronts that I could control for my own open houses. You know, it's just icing on the cake that the listing sold to, you know. Um, and as a as a team leader, uh, did you clear it with the homeowners when you came through uh, the for sale by owners that you could bring like you could have a list of other properties that you guys or your team or your brokerage have for sale and set up additional showings on site? Or was that kind of a sacred ground where you only uh, talked about that one property? No, no, dude, it's it's open. I mean, if that property doesn't work for them, I mean, we even have banners, like right when you walk in the open house that say, you know, welcome to the open house. And then it gives instructions, you know, uh, come, you know, step, like, like, you know, here's the steps, like one, two, three, four, right? And it's, you know, come inside, sign in, take a look around, fall in love, make an offer, and then blow that it says, this home isn't for you, no worries, we can show you others. <laughs> yeah, right. So like everybody's on the same, like, you know, those FISBOs, just like any other open house, but the FISBOs, like they know, like I am there to leverage their property to get clients that aren't looking to buy their property. Now, right. if I get some of that's interested in their property and, and look, we, we will have, we, we have had, it's a small percentage, you know, but you're going to have those, those times it's again, it's rare because you know, only half of 1% of homes sell through the open house, but you're going to have those times if you're doing this at a high volume where you find that buyer, the FISBO writes the offer, you don't get paid on it. And some people get right. discouraged by that, but I'm like, no, dude, like you get a fucking testimonial then from that, you know, so then that's going to help you get more of these FISBO open houses. Cause we know statistically 60% of all FISBOs end up eventually listing and selling successfully with an agent, you know? So yeah. You know, it's just developing ourselves as that resource, you know, and then we're having a lot of success right now, just calling FISBO is just a bottom line upfront approach, you know, right now. Now they're lesser commissions, you know, it's harder to get a full commission on those, you know, yeah. but again, even with that, we're like, now our price points below yours, but you know, you mentioned that blue collar mentality. I mean, to me, it still blows my mind the amount of money that we can make in this industry, you know, just growing up, not being around money, not having, like, I've had a fucking work for every penny I've ever made, you know, right. So, you know, right. to me. I mean, people bitch about commissions and whatever, but I'm like, dude, like if I, if I can still make four or five grand for a commission, to me, that's a lot of fucking money, you know, right? Um, uh, you know, so then yeah, I look at this with our average, like there's not shit in our market under 400 grand. So even if I got to take that FISBO, because like if they're willing to pay a 3% co-broke and then it's like, okay, well, if you're willing to pay a percent more, 
right? Like I'll go out there and do a full, full service listing for you, market your property, get you top dollar, you know, explain that to them for just a percent more. We'll keep to give away to, you yep. know, okay, well then on a, you know, like we're not selling, there's not much in our market selling under 400 grand. So usually it's four to 500 grand, you know, in that price point. So it's like, I'm making still eight to 10 grand, but then even from there, it's, Thinking about it a step further of, okay, if we leverage this, right, we got open house opportunities, we got social media lead gen opportunities from this, we got, you know, we got multiple sign calls that are kind of coming from that property, you know, um, you know, plus there's a chance that FISBO needs another home to go out there and buy that we can get paid on. So it, it, it's just leveraging each deal into multiple deals and it makes up for that lower commission. But again, I just look at this and fuck, dude, if I can do like eight grand for a, a per commission, you know, my teammates and I always laugh because we we're like, we never thought there'd be a day where we'd like kind of cringe and not cringe in a negative way, but cringe in a way just because we can't help them in this market. Mm -hmm. Where if somebody calls in and is like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm pre-qualified for up for 350, you know, 350 grand. I got 20% down payment. You know, the majority of my career have been slinging 250,000 our homes, dude. You know, right? So now <laughs> in this climate that we're in, we're like, what the fuck, dude? You know, right? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, what the shit is this? Like, holy crap, I can make this off of that. Okay, that sounds like a deal. Yeah. Now that and I love the fact that you're, you're the way your your mind and my mind and a few other folks work. It's it's not a net loss; it's a net gain over the time. Like you said, you get the testimonial. Uh, who knows who they know? So they, let's say they are able able bodied and wanted to do it on their own. Great, let them do it. But what if a grandmama or a cousin or a family friend can't do it? You know what? They just physically can't do it. They don't have the time. Whatever. You they'll refer you over in a heartbeat if you do a good job for them, like anything else in business. Yeah, I, I mean, always look at this of like the amateurs focus on the immediate commission, right? Mm -hmm. Professionals understand the power of LTV, lifetime value of a customer. You know, so it's like I look at okay, every customer to our organization should be at least worth 70 grand. Now that first initial commission might be 10, you know, but between the repeat referral business that they come in, it should be 70 grand if I do my job and and you know develop that rapport and then stay in touch, keep that relationship live after the fact. You know, I mean, if you look at most businesses, dude, they go into the ne you know negative net loss to acquire a customer. So I look at this, hey, if I can make a few grand net to, to gain an initial customer, but then focus on that LTV that, you know, making that other 60, 70 grand, fuck, I'll, you know, um, now don't get me wrong. Like, I'm not a, di like, we don't go, I don't go out there and market for discounting. I don't, you know, like, I want to go out there and, and, you know, make as much as I can make and, and service for our clients at the highest level. But I also, you know, hog, hog, what's the saying? Pigs get fed, hogs get slaughtered. Yep, exactly. And it's true. I mean, in your mindset, I never actually get this. I never got that feel of like, are you just trying to, you know, use that situation to do something non-ethical or non-professional, you know, to, to get a leg up. I mean, my full on thought when you were talking about your program is the fact that, damn, that's a, that's a stinking good deal. And it's a great very lower barrier to entry because you're giving something away before you're asking for anything in return. And like you said, you may not get anything out of it, but damn, if you're going to give some good value, good vibes out you know, to the people who are experiencing you, because a lot of real estate agents are, they're, they're challenging when it comes to a tight situation because not having something makes you crave it or look at it on consistently. So if you don't have the money you want or the leads you want or the sellers you want, or the buyers you want, or whatever else, you're going to look at it, someone and go like, how do I get it? How do I get it? And you said, well, here, follow my path. I, I shall show you how to do this. Everyone's going to benefit from it. And you're going to get a great name around town for helping folks. So I didn't bad ass. I, I, this honestly has been, I mean, I'm having more fun in this conversation. Than I've had in a lot of interviews. I got to tell you, this is a lot. Of <laughs> Yeah, dude, it's it's what I love about this podcast. I mean, that's why I keep on scripting. We can just come on and shoot the shit and record it. Hopefully <laughs> other people get value out of this too, you know, right? <laughs> Absolutely. It's the name of the game, buddy. So, Greg, for those that are watching, listen, man, if people want to continue following you or if they want to reach out, whether it be a question or maybe they got a, a you know, referral for your market, want to talk to you about, you know, opportunities that you with the EXP, whatever the reason may be, like, where's the best place? You know, you got an amazing podcast, YouTube channel. Where's the best place for people to reach out, get in touch with you, continue following you? I appreciate it, man. Um, easiest way, probably uh, Facebook or Instagram. So Greg McDaniel, R-E-U, stands for Real Estate Uncensored, the podcast. Well, that's on the Instagram handle. And then Greg McDaniel on Facebook. And then R-E-U Nation on uh, YouTube. But uh, go out there and just kind of reach out. Send me a message. If you like something, you know, give me a holler. If, uh, if you guys are interested in the Red X stuff, uh, hit me up on a DM. Um, and I'll give you my code. with will wipe off the $150 sign-up fee. So you can start literally at no cost. Um, no strings attached whatsoever. So if that's something of help, you know, hit me up, guys. I'm here to help you. And my, my market, San Francisco Bay Area market, we help anybody that can buy or sell here in the area. Uh, best number, 
1978's myself. So go ahead and hit me up there. And this has been an awesome episode. And you guys are going to have to look for uh, Joshua on the Real Estate Uncensored when he comes and visits us here in the next couple of days. Yep. Yeah, I can't wait to. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, and I highly encourage you guys to go check out Greg's YouTube channel. I mean, check him out everywhere. But like on his YouTube channel, one of the differences, not only is he doing a podcast, but like he records himself doing these live calls and stuff. Yeah, you know, right. <laughs> like you, you get to see, I, mean, I was just listening to some of your, I think you were calling expires, inviting him to a seller workshop. Yeah. You know, and I was just, just before we jumped on here, I was watching some of your videos, right? Like, you know, so you get to see it live in action, which we don't get to see a lot in this industry. So it's, it's fucking cool, man. So yeah, well, Greg, awesome. dude. Yeah, man. I appreciate your time, man. It's been awesome catching up, brother. Thanks, man. I really enjoy this. I mean, we we're talking about tech. Remember, we did tell somebody, right? We told everybody that they stayed at the end to get to learn about this new tech. Uh, oh, little that's right. That's right. Uh, so the this is a brand new launch uh, as of today's recording. I think it started out last night and then today. Um, threads from Instagram is basically like Twitter for Instagram. Now, Joshua and I were sitting here going, what in the heck do we do with this thing? It just came out literally a couple of hours ago. So take a look at it. You can integrate it directly from your uh, Instagram account. If you download threads, you will pull. You can pull all of your content over. I mean, not your content, but your contact information, your bio, your photo, and stuff like that. And then if anybody can tell me how to use this thing, please DM me <laughs> and Joshua. We'll do a group chat about how to use this thing and thing because uh, there's power. I just don't know where the on switch is yet. Yeah. That's interesting. Yep. Yep. No. Yeah. It, it, we'll, we'll see where it goes. I mean, Zuck's created some awesome shit thus far. So True. we'll see where it goes, man. So yeah, I appreciate uh, you, you not forgetting about that. Cause I told you <laughs> the ball on that dude. So, um, but again, man, truly appreciate you being here, spending your busy time with us, man. It's been a lot of fun, brother. Thank you, my friend. I, and then thank you again. It's such a pleasure, pleasure to talk with someone uh, who actually can understand and, and has the drive that uh, you have. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's refreshing. So again, thank you. Yeah, 100% those watching and listening. As always, we truly appreciate all your support. Keep crushing it. Keep kicking ass. We'll see you next time. Peace.